and welcome to I Went Uncut, an event designer's podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina. And in today's podcast episode, we're going to be discussing how to elevate your designs and unleash your creativity. How many times have you done a design for a client and have felt like, I need to do more, or I'm too afraid to do more? You know, there's always those fears that go on in our mind. And it's very important to just kind of find the focus on how to develop, you know, beautiful designs and really that make that wow factor stand out. And also finding the inspiration for it because there are moments that we're just like, I have no more ideas. Like what's going on? You have like a block of ideas. Another thing is maybe that you're kind of new to the industry or you are seasoned and feel like a little bit stagnant, like, oh my God, I'm doing the same thing over and over again. So we're going to be discussing all those things and how to overcome it and to really help you kind of elevate those designs. And we're also going to be looking at different, you know, type of designs and how to incorporate that into your business. There's so much transformative power that happens in, you know, designing an event. So, you know, the way that you should look at an event, it's like a puzzle. There's so many pieces to make one grand picture come to life. So when you're in this process of designing, how do you find inspiration? Like, how do you, you know, really focus on the creativity aspect? So to help you, first of all, you need to think about what is it that inspires me? Like, what is it that helps me kind of, you know, flow with ideas and just keep going at it? So the first thing you want to think about is clients constantly, thanks to social media, such as Instagram, Pinterest, Google, they have so many ideas of their own that you forget that you can use their ideas as a launching pad for your creativity. Meaning, you know, those moments that, like I said, you feel like, what am I doing for this, you know, couple? You know, what type of design? I know they want, let's say, like a romantic goth design. How do I bring that to life? What does that mean? So the number one thing you want to do first is you want to research. You have to research and really focus on what does this design mean to them? Because what, you know, this design means to this person and to the next person is completely different. Remember one thing, you're always creating a custom design for your clients. Their special day. Everyone has a different meaning behind what a design should look like. And especially when it comes to like their wedding. So you want to really get to know them, like get those core details from your client of like, who they are, what do they like to do? So that way you're able to start, you know, stepping into that mindset that they have and start making kind of those choices that will really help them align with their dream design. So a big thing that when you are designing, you have to think about how can I make it bold? Some of the most memorable events you have seen that maybe you even like admire from other designers is the fact that they took risk. They were risk takers in their designs. So we're actually going to discuss some of those different designs and how they can be elevated. And for that, I do have some photos that we're going to go through to really kind of dissect how this was elevated. And also that will help you get your motor started to get inspiration. So this first photo that's here on the screen, you will see that this design is very beautiful. They use the actual landscape to their favor which whenever you are doing any type of design outdoors, always use the outdoor space as your inspiration and also as like a starting foundation piece for your design. So if you do have a beautiful design in, let's say the nature picture that's in front of you, like in, like in this one, like with mountains, it's a lot of greenery, it's lush, it's beautiful, it's nature. You don't want to compete with it. So you want to think about how can I enhance it? With this design, the actual thing that they did that really made it stand out by being bold is creating a nice structure framework with minimal draping that looks very romantic, chic, elegant, and modern all at the same time. They incorporate a lot of the lush florals that just enhance the overall space of the landscape versus competing with it. So, you know, they stick within the tones of black, white, and gold. It looks magical. It looks dreamy. Like, who wouldn't want to get married there? So think of how you can create a beautiful structure that is just open and allows the actual, you know, nature picture that's in front of everyone 
to really be a playing part in your design. And never forget that adding draping always creates a romantic effect. So like in this photo, they went with that sheer draping that's very, you know, transparent. So it's beautiful. So it's not blocking any of the view. And it's just, if anything, making it super dreamy. Then we go into this design. So one of the, you know, bold out of the box elements that this design um, took on was creating a lighting grid in the ceiling that made it look like starry nights. So they have a lot of candlelight. If you look at the photo, it has no kind of candlelight uh, except on the table and nothing else really than the lighting grid that they did in the ceiling. This is such a power move and doing something bold like this for your design really will make it stand out and be something that everyone always remembers. Like, oh my God, we were sitting underneath the stars. So something like this is great. So whenever you do have a very elevated design and you have a very tall ceiling to work with, doing a lighting ceiling grid is an amazing way to go to create a very beautiful effect that is just impactful and very, very romantic. Then this design, this is more of a minimalistic approach. So as you can see here, there's a lot of greenery and this is an overhead shot, but there were many risk factors that were done in this design. For example, an overhead of an actual ceiling lighting grid. They did a round dance floor, which is such a statement. This company is amazing at designing. And if you notice the way that the tables are laid out, it's like everything looks very clean cut and it's perfect because it gives a very modern, fresh feel, and it's very playful. So this is a great way to also take a risk is by doing something outside the box because sometimes as designers, we feel that we have to fill out every single space we see in front of us, and that is not the case. Sometimes less is more. Then we have this design, which it brings so many elements together, and this is called more of a neutral color palette. So with this, you see a lot of beautiful dreamy draping, but what really is the wow factor is like, look at that ceiling. It has, you know, various hanging silk florals as well as roses with ribbons, and you just look up and you feel like you're in a garden, like the most beautiful garden that is just Oh my, it's like heaven sent, right? So looking at something like this, doing a bold factor of going wow, like over the top in the ceiling is never a bad thing to do, especially when your venue is very tall and allows you to do that. Also adding draping is great because it can cover any imperfections that you may see in a design. Then this one. This is to show you that you can be in a banquet space or even a ballroom and still make it a wow factor, even if it's very neutral. You know, creating a focal point at the sweetheart table is never a bad idea. At the end of the day, when it comes to a wedding, where does the focus go to is the couple. So what better way to highlight them than to put them on a sweetheart table that has very intricate draping, that looks very smooth and sleek, and then doing a beautiful, you know, truss design in the middle of the dance floor that just makes everyone feel like they're dancing under twinkling lights and roses. Like, who wouldn't love that? And these are all different designs that to show you that there's different styles out there. Every designer has their own signature style. And, you know, at the end of the day, they are designing for their clients, but they're adding their signature to it, which is so important in every design you do is stop, you know, not listening to that little voice that tells you take the risk. Like sometimes these risks really do pay off. I do recommend you always practice on the design and not just throw yourself in there and say, okay, we're just going to figure it out when we get there. No, like do a test run before you actually execute a design, but don't be afraid to be a risk taker. It is so important in design because those designs that just really are out of the box are always so memorable. And those are the events that you feel like, wow, I did that. I'm ready for the next level. As a designer, we're constantly looking to up our inventory and have the latest trends and also items that we can always use over and over or even just make a wow factor and really show our clients that we have something so different that you can't find nowhere else and that our ideas aren't crazy and that going for giant florals or doing a floral wall with draping is not too much, but the perfect touch for their event. Look no further than Event Decor Direct. It's your one-stop shop for all different design products from dance floor wraps, draping, linens, hardware, and so much more. And 
to all of you that are watching or listening, you do get an 11% discount code by using I Would Uncut 11. So make sure to use it at your checkout with Event Decor Direct. Now you might be thinking, okay, these are great images, which, you know, shout out to those amazing designers. You will see all of their information down below of the images I just reviewed. You might be thinking, okay, those are great designs. How do I find the inspiration for these designs? Or how do I, you know, get the source to be out of the box? So I want you to think about how do you find your inspiration source? Like, you know, you need to explore various sources. You need to find what kind of motivates you, inspires you. For many people, it might be art, going to art galleries and seeing, you know, the beautiful masterpieces. Or maybe it's nature, being outdoors and seeing florals and greenery. Maybe it's fashion, seeing the beautiful fabrics and the runway shows. Or even, let's say, just what's on TV. And I will say this, when it comes to choosing the you know, inspiration source, you will see that whenever you pay attention to something, like you love going to concerts, you love going to galleries, that's kind of like your calling. That's like your inspiration if you think about it. So for me, a lot of the designs I do, I like to go grand, like more is more. And people always say like, oh, like that's such a, like that's Lucy style. And as a designer, that's what you want for people to kind of know your signature style because of what you do. Like you have a stamp. And how did I find that style early on? It wasn't from my first event. I'll be honest. It was from, you know, designing. I would say once I did my like fifth event, everyone kept saying like, oh my God, that, that's so you, like you could tell you did it. And I was like, what do you mean? And I started realizing that a lot of the designs I do were influenced by fashion. Uh, you know, a lot of the collections like that I would see of fashion shows, like the patterns, the finishes, the glitz, the glam, I always would incorporate that into my designs. And that's how I started finding my signature and also kind of like being more bold and creative because I would get this inspiration from, you know, let's say a collection that let's say Dolce and Gabbana did. And it was like grand florals and bold and blinged out. And I was like, oh my God, I can do this with linens. I could do it within fabric. I want finishes and I want to add all these little extra accessories that make tablescape statements. And I started realizing that being outside the box, people loved it because I was also in a way staying true to my own creativity, but then also pushing myself and being bold and going out there and saying, you know what, forget this. Like, this is what my clients want, but I need to show them how I, like, I could take this to the next level. And it would be great to see the client's reaction and say, oh my God, this is even picture the, better than what I even imagined it, than what I ever pictured in my mind. So it's an amazing feeling. And also, you know, some things that can inspire is personal experiences and emotions, like things that you may have going on, like a big thing is like maybe you watched a film and it was very emotional and it told a beautiful love story and you want to translate that for your client because what happens a lot of the times is even though clients have seen things on Pinterest, on Google, on Instagram, they're like, I want something like this, but I want it to be my own. And I'll give you an example. I was meeting with this bride and she kept saying how she doesn't like like glitz, like she doesn't like sparkle. And I'm like, okay. So I asked her questions like, so tell me a little bit of, you know, your love story. How did you guys meet? Uh, also tell me a little bit about your personality. Tell me about your favorite film or TV show. And then funny enough, she started saying how she wanted her wedding to be a beautiful forest that's like enchanted, but that has a very like sexy, sleek adult type of, you know, design that is modern and not just your traditional design that we always see. And as she kept describing it, I was like, was one of your favorite films growing up Twilight? And she's like, oh my God, that's exactly like kind of my inspiration for my wedding. Like the Twilight scenery when, you know, they got married, um, that movie in the movie scene, they got married and um, it was very beautiful and it was outdoors in a forest, a lot of wooden uh, elements with greenery and beautiful white florals. And funny enough, she's like, oh, my God, how did you know that's the design I wanted? How did you? And honestly, it comes from 
finding again, always inspiration and always being like four steps ahead. You have to like look at what's being put out into the mass media. The best way to know what clients are going to be asking you for in terms of design, or at least giving you kind of like a foundation of what they want is see what's being, uh, you know, put out into Netflix or into the movie theater or, you know, what's even trending, what novels, because think about it. As soon as, you know, Bridgerton came out, the series, how many people fell in love with it and wanted that concept? So many, right? We've seen so many different variations of it. But that's why it's important to be knowledgeable of different, you know, things that are trending. So that way, when you are having these client consultations and doing their design, it becomes a seamless process for you where you're able to know like what the color scheme is and get an idea what the vibe is. Because we are in the business of creating memorable experiences. And that's something I definitely want all of you to remember is that you always want to create a lasting impression and that every design you do is an experience for your clients and their guests. And you want them to leave raving and talking about how amazing it was, like how every detail was thought out. And that comes through you just being very precise in all the details and following through on on the design. And I'm not talking about everything has to be like theme. Like it's not like I'm going to, you know, create a vampire type wedding. No, I'm just going to go off the ambiance and incorporate that into the wedding of creating that moody, romantic, sleek, very sexy, beautiful design. So here are some actionable strategies so that way you're able to feel a little bit more confident when it comes to pushing the boundary, pushing the envelope, and designing outside of your comfort zone or thinking outside the box. So keeping a design journal is the number one thing I recommend is that you always have a sketchbook with you, like your journal and sketchbook, or you can have one over the other. But let me explain a little bit of the two. So a actual journal is where you jot down ideas because your mind is constantly, you know, going, you want to write down these ideas before you forget. So having a, you know, design journal is very helpful. This is where you would just go and put things into exactly how you think about them. Like, okay, like, you know, how cool would it be to do a avant-garde whimsical wedding and then write down all the ideas that come to mind, the type of colors, the linens, the finishes, all of that. Now a sketchbook is fantastic because whether you are Picasso or not, as long as you understand your sketches, that is gold. So in your sketchbook, you would start, you know, like, let's say you have an exact idea of how you want the grand backdrop to be or an idea of how you want the sweetheart table to look sketch it out and you'll see that that's so good because you'll be able to go back to that when you are you know feeling like oh my god like I need I need ideas I don't know like right now I'm at a place where like I can't think of anything and then you go back to the ideas when you were just literally panning them out nonstop, and you'll say oh my god this is great let me add to this and then there you go you found your design spark Uh, Another thing that is very helpful to do is creating a actual, which is going to be funny, but creating actual mood boards. I love to do that. Anytime I get an idea, like right now we're, you know, about to go into the holiday season, I immediately start creating mood boards, even for events that no one has asked me to do yet. I start creating a bunch because these are ideas that I have fresh in my mind. And what's amazing is that I can go back to them. And what happens, like, I'll tell you guys a little story of what happened last year when I had to design a Hallmark event. Uh, they, they came and said, listen, we want a traditional Christmas stage design. I was like, great. And I started thinking, I'm like, oh my God, what can I really create to make this like a traditional Christmas, but that's not like your cookie cutter, like always the same. And funny enough, Since I always create so many mood boards, I had one already kind of started and I was able to go to those ideas I had in the past and say, hmm, this is actually like a really good color scheme. Let me build off of this. So right there, it was two things. One, I was able to do a quick turnaround for the client and come up with a design literally within the same same day. And two, it's basically re-inspiring myself because again, there's periods where we're just knocking out ideas and there's other times that we're just like oh no 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 maybe that's a little too crazy of an idea let me put that in my back pocket so long story short 
I ended up designing that, you know, off that mood color scheme that I did before. And I started adding all the elements and I was inspired and I finished it within an hour. Then within, you know, the next hour, I sent it to the company and they loved it. And I designed that stage down to the big 12 foot trees and like all the giant ornaments, like everything came out beautiful. And I was just like, hmm, I'm very glad that I have these, you know, practical ways to like dish out all my design ideas. So that way, when there are moments that like I have too much going on, I'm able to come back to those ideas with a fresh mind and do even better ideas. So that's a good thing to do. Also, another way to just, you know, really enhance your creativity is by constantly staying educated and, you know, really attending classes and stuff like that. I constantly always love, like, I love education. And I think always going to classes to revamp ideas and to also get more inspiration or to learn more techniques is never a bad thing. Uh, as you all know, at IWED Global, we do have various courses. And, you know, with our students, what I love hearing from them is how they come to the class and they always feel inspired and motivated and they find a community of like-minded individuals that also like help fuel their ideas to the next level because they you know as designers we always feel like our ideas might be too big or too crazy and I'm here to tell you they're not nothing is ever too crazy or too grand what it is is just you need to literally write it out or sketch it out and then build on it and have an actual plan on how to execute it. But it's an amazing thing, again, with education, because like I said, so many times you feel like, I don't know how to do this technique. Like, I don't know how to do this. Well, guess what? There's always a class available to learn. So don't be afraid to also just say, you know what? I need to learn more because when you learn more, you earn more. That's my motto. So in the end, do not be afraid of pushing boundaries Do not be afraid of thinking outside the box or just really elevating your designs to the next level because you are literally one design away from being a most memorable design that is shared, reposted on the internet. And it's all because you finally took the leap and said, you know what, I'm going to do it. So don't ever be afraid to just push the envelope when it comes to your designs. Like, again, it's a constant thing that we have to practice on elevating our designs and making sure that you know, we think of all the different ideas that we could execute and put it into practice because when you're working with so many clients and there's so many ideas, everyone has a different definition of what their dream day is, but that's why they come to you as the expert. And that's why it's so important that you stay ahead of the trends and that you also practice on, you know, doing certain designs and push the envelope because, You don't want to be boxed in as the designer that does the same thing over and over again. That's not what we want for you. So make sure to just keep pushing boundaries. Find what inspirates, inspirates, inspires. Find what inspires you, but also inspirates is a word. Um, And just go for it and start putting it into practice. And thank you so much for watching today's podcast episode. I'm your host, Lucy Molina. Make sure to follow, like, and subscribe you know, and stay tuned for the next episode at I Would Uncut. And everyone have a great day. Make sure to comment down below and also make sure to like if you're listening or watching.